Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Briareos Kerensky, and welcome to the review of Fate Extella The Umbral Star, the latest console game belonging to the Fate universe. Fate Extella is the sequel to Fate Extra, published on the PSP in 2010 and 2011 in Japan and America, respectively. Fate Extella will reach Western shores during the beginning of 2017. Fate Extella sheds its predecessor's turn-based combat for a Musou approach, where your servant will plow through endless numbers of enemies. The story picks up after the events of Extra, with Nero and her master winning the Holy Grail War and getting a special ring called Regalia as a proof of their deeds. Nero is soon attacked by Tamamo no Mae and an exact copy of Nero's master, to great surprise of both. The servant Archimedes, serving as a maintainer of the Moon Cell Automaton computer, explains that both Nero and Tamamo wield an incomplete regalia, and the two must be united to stabilize the lunar world. However, not everything is as simple as it seems, as other servants are plotting behind Nero's and Tamamo's backs, starting from Archimedes himself. Nero, Tamamo no Mae and Attila are the three main servants, each with their own storyline. A fourth campaign, again featuring Nero as the main character, closes this narrative arc. The three main servants each have four secondary servants at their command, and their storylines are unlocked once their master's quest is completed. The first impression about the story isn't particularly nice, mainly due to how some servants have been written. Keep in mind I've skipped Fate Extra, and seeing Nero and Tamamo swinging between brave commanders on the battlefield and lovey-dovey girls when around your character is almost irritating. I know Tamamo wants to become a perfect wife, but her and Nero's characterization is way too stereotypical and forced. Actila shows the same split as well, but her disposition is better explained as the story goes on. Her two faces feel much more well written than those of the other main servants, especially because she's spared from rebuttals about the size of her chest like it happens between Nero and Elizabeth Bathory. Bathory in particular starts off as a comic relief, but then proves to be a pivotal force during the story, and just like many other secondary servants, she comes off as better written than the main characters. Secondary servants behave like their counterparts found in the other Fate games, with Gilgamesh always boasting, Iskandar praising opponents and battles in general, Jeanne d'Arc trying to be as helpful as possible, or Elizabeth Bathory behaving like a stuck-up idol. Main servants have no less than five stages in their storyline, while secondary servants only three. Secondary storylines do a good job in giving players more details about this regalia war, I guess, despite repeating some scenes more than twice. Arturia, the original Saber, pokes her hand around these missions, though requirements to unlock her are quite elaborate and must be fulfilled in main campaigns or in free battles. Fate Extella might have shed turn-based battles, but there are still a few very light strategy elements in its structure. The goal of almost every mission is to gather enough keys to unlock the regime matrix. Maps are divided into sectors, each sector providing a certain number of keys. Mission starts with the player on an equal footing or with the opponent on the verge of unlocking the regime matrix, but there is no real reason to worry about that, you'll always be either fighting for or on the verge of winning a sector. 
The only chance to lose a stage by conquest is to ignore any special conditions your supporting characters will always remind you, to the point of being absolutely obnoxious about it. These special conditions include defeating opposing servants before they make short work of your defenses, conquer specific sectors to disarm traps, or lure enemy servants in allied spaces while you conquer the rest of the map. Sectors are conquered by defeating all sector controllers. As long as a single controller lives, an infinite number of lesser enemies will constantly spawn. These enemies are there to provide a mean to build up special meters for players, rather than being an affecting defense force. Enemy controllers might not be available upon entering a sector, and will only spawn when enough normal enemies have been defeated. If an enemy sector is left alone for too much, a plant will spawn there, and those will start to produce sector controllers to attack sectors under your control. It's not required to conquer all sectors to complete a map, and especially at lower levels, trying to will feel like draining a lake with a bucket. Allied servants sit in their sector waiting for aggressors, and indirect support to your army is limited to an handful of healing and boost spells, either code casts or by sacrificing what are essentially lives. It's disappointing to see Fate Extella's strategic potential squandered, developers didn't have to go overboard with it, but a bit more depth wouldn't have hurt, like the ability to order idling servants or implementing a rudimentary rock-paper-scissor system for servant classes. Due to this lack of death, free battles aren't particularly enticing and are mostly used to grind levels and collectibles. Combat is as fast and not too technical as you'd expect, and fits well with the game. Servants get longer and more complex combos as they increase their level, and they have attacks different enough from each other. In addition to standard attacks, servants can use special attacks, moon drives, and noble phantasms. <laughs> Special attacks and moon drives have their dedicated meter, filled by killing enemies. Noble phantasms can usually only be unleashed once per mission, and only when three phantasm circuits have been collected. Special attacks are the best and quickest way to deal with strong enemies, and often it's best to run away from bosses, rack up kills to get some meter, and then attack the boss with a special. This is one of my biggest gripes with the game. Special attacks and moon drives are easy to get, allowing to be spammed against opposing servants. Even without those, there is no real difference when fighting against different named characters, and I found there is more variety in powerful sector controllers than computer controlled servants. Fighting in Fate Extella swings between mindlessly fun to uneventfully boring and irritating. It's mindlessly fun because the game doesn't require high technical skills and perfect timings to string combos, or multiple buttons across the controller to perform flashy attacks, but except for sector controllers and servants, there is essentially no opposition. Entering a sector only to see that there are four controllers, and all of these controllers are hidden behind an ocean of idling enemies will get boring pretty fast. Once controllers or servants are there, you unleash a series of special attacks to quickly dispatch them, and then move to another sector and repeat the whole ordeal until the stage is conquered. And then onward to another stage with the same objectives. The camera knows how to be irritating. There is no way to permanently lock it behind your character, only constantly reset it with the L1 button, and only servants can be locked on, and then again only when they are in front of your character and visible on screen. Moving the camera around becomes a necessity, but it shouldn't be so. As said before, at times trying to conquer a whole map can feel an impossible battle, 
with Allied troops happily idling in their own sector. Allied servants are also always weaker than the aggressors and might have a hard time against standard sector controllers. I get that plowing through armies is the gist of Musou games, but I find it irritating having to babysit allies, especially when they are nothing like that when on the opposite side. This is not to say that the game is bad, it provides plenty of fun despite its shortcomings, but it's not the most refined experience ever. <laughs> and the experience for Fate fans will be even better, there is a lot of content here. Before and after every battle, sometimes even in the midst of it, there are lengthy cutscenes that can all be relieved in a comprehensive gallery. Some of these cutscenes present a choice, and the correct one will increase the servant's affection level with the player. High affection levels translate into more slot for instant skills, a series of customizable boosts, from more experience, increased meter fill, or various kinds of offensive and defensive aids. If you like the Fate universe, there's plenty of stuff to keep you playing for a long time, although in the long run Fate Extella isn't particularly appealing unless you are a completionist and want to clear it in all difficulty levels to unlock all code casts. Code casts can be compared to items in RPGs, they include heals, cures to status ailments, temporary boosts, and so on. They are acquired by killing sector controllers and must be forged by using quantum pieces, which are dropped by normal enemies. Higher difficulty levels increase enemy damage, number of elemental traps on maps, and how long plants take to spawn enemies, but if hard and extra hard are tackled in succession after clearing the game in normal mode, character levels, quality of code casts, and the knowledge of the system will result in a very small increase in challenge. Fate Extella is a good looking game. I think the highlight are the menus and the various transitions they have, but on the battlefield it's no slouch either, mainly thanks to a constant frame rate of 60 FPS, at least on the PS4. There aren't many special effects, the only difference in enemy design between armies is the color, and only a few of the handful of environments have an interesting visual design, but everything is geared toward keeping the game as fast as it needs to be. Japanese voice work is of good quality, and I kinda wish for the Western version to have English voices too, even if this is very unlikely. A lot of information during battles is delivered through voiceovers, reading the subtitles can be distracting, especially when hunting for a sector controller or an item. Fate Extella is one of the few games using the DS4's speaker to deliver few lines, which can be surprising at first. Not much is said through the pad, mostly about sector traps, but it's a neat feature. Fate Extella The Umbral Star is a decent game. Some of its potentials have been overlooked, but whether or not you are a fan of the Fate universe, it's not hard to find its qualities. If you're in for Fate, this game will be a treat thanks to its extensive amount of content. If you aren't, or know Fate only from the anime series, it's still worth a look. Fate Extella is not perfect, but it will be able to dish out some solid hours of entertainment. 
I hope you have enjoyed this review and you stick around for more. Briarios Kerensky, over and out. Sarabaja.